Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on another beautiful, wonderful fall day. It's good to gather in this place. This Sunday uh, is the day designated to celebrate Reformation Day. For uh, 100 bonus points, can anybody tell me what day is actually Reformation Day? October 31st. Oh, faith, okay. you nailed it. You get those points. You can redeem them in heaven. Right, yes, uh, yes, October 31st is actual Reformation Day, but we transfer it to the uh, last Sunday in October to celebrate and give thanks uh, for those who have uh, looked at the church and said sometimes maybe things are going off, off path and they need to be brought back. And for Martin Luther, it was that we are justified by grace, by grace alone, by God's goodness toward us, God's love for us, offering to us the fullness of forgiveness. We celebrate that every Sunday, don't we? where we begin our worship service, so I invite you to come before God as we join together in the brief order for confession and forgiveness. Please rise with me. Brothers and sisters, we begin our worship as we live our lives in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, so that we might perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us that sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The very heart of the gospel. Let's come before now, come before God to claim it as we come to Him in confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will, and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thanks be to God that he has provided for us a Savior, one who is willing to give up his very life so that we might enter into the grace of God. I invite you to enter into that now. For we know that in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. It's a call that ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are forgiven by grace so that we might live a life of praise. Let us join him together, praising God with our opening hymn. What a friend we have in Jesus.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us continue to lift our hearts to God with our next hymn, Lord, Take My Hand. Job died old 
and is full of days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament reading will be taken from the book of Hebrews, the seventh chapter. The author writes, Furthermore, the former priests were many in number, because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But Jesus holds his priesthood permanently, because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your turn now to proclaim God's word. We will join our hearts, our voices together as we proclaim Psalm 34, a wonderful praise to God for God's deliverance, the way in which God acts in our lives to lift us up, for the ways in which we are able to taste and see that the Lord is good. A wonderful verse from this song. Let us join our hearts and our voices together. Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. His poor soul cried, and was heard by the Lord, and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamped around those who feared him, and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. Here ends our song. Amen. This time, anybody who would like to join me up here at the front, I will invite you to come on down.
and one more, let's see one more just to embarrass the kids a little bit. Yeah, there they are, all dressed up. Jackson was Spider-Man last year. Miriam was a dragon. It'd be a lot of fun to put on a costume, right? Kind of pretend that you're something different or put on a little bit of a persona. You guys ever do that as Christians? As people of faith? What do you think a Christian costume might look like? Any idea? Anybody? Well, I'll tell you. You look exactly like you look. In fact, your Christian costume is you. The person that you are. The person that Jesus is making you to be. As you go about your day, you can put on other clothes, you can put on a mask, and you can pretend to be the Hulk, or a stormtrooper, or, or characters from movies, whatever it may be. But that's just pretend, right? Your Christian life means going out there, and being who you are, and who God made you to be, each and every day. And you might not get candy for that, but you might get joy, you might get peace, you might deepen a sense of love. And let me tell you, candy wears off pretty fast, but those things last forever. So I would encourage you guys, this week and in the week to come, as you think about getting dressed up for Halloween, let Jesus dress you each and every day in His love. Let that be your soul. Can you guys pray with me about that? How about you, baby? Can you sit still for a sec? I got it. I'll let her run. Let's bow our heads. Let's pray, you guys. Dear God, I give you thanks for this day. We are thankful for wonderful opportunities to have fun in this world, uh, to experience excitement and all the good things that Halloween can bring. But we should, and I hope we are, even more excited about what you do in our life, what your Son, Jesus Christ, can make of us as we uh, take him into our life and let him shape us. Thank you for the wonderful blessings you have given to us and help us to walk closely with your Son each and every day. We ask it in Jesus' name. Oh, man. Thanks for joining me up here, guys. Maybe next Sunday I'll have some candy to give you, whatever's left over. You guys take care. And as they make their way back, I would invite the congregation to rise. Let us join together in our gospel acclamation. Turn your eyes upon Jesus.
uh, you know, doing the best she could to take care of it. She went out one day, she was getting groceries. When she came home, her door had been smashed in. It was obvious that there had been a home invasion. Somebody had broken in, rifled through, and stole a whole lot of her stuff. Tragic, terrible, frightening, all of those things that you can imagine uh, would go through a person. If you've ever had that happen, you know it's not a, not a pleasant thing. Uh, and so, of course, the very first thing she did was call the police. Said, I've been broken into, my house has been rifled, I need somebody to come right away. Well, sure enough, there was a, an officer unit real close by, a K-9 unit. You know what those things are? K-9 unit, yeah, right? Police and a dog. Uh, and so they said, we're responding immediately, we're on route. They pulled up as quickly as they could. She was standing out in the front yard, kind of wrenching her hands, all worked up about this. The police officer got out of the car, let the dog out, started walking towards her, and she said, ah, oh, great. Not only have I been broken into, but they sent me a blind police officer. <laughs> I don't mean to make light of blindness, obviously. Being blindness is a, is a horrible affliction, a terrible, terrible thing that could happen to anybody. Uh, people do manage to somehow work with blindness. Uh, there's many things that have happened in our, our society where they are able to teach people to function very, very well and actually very well in, in our world. But in the ancient world, it was not so. There were not those, those safety nets, those, those ways of trying to teach people how to, to deal with blindness. We hear about, in our Gospel reading today, a man by the name of Bartimaeus who is blind. And I can well imagine that day by day he would shuffle out of the city of Jericho and, and he might have learned how to count the number of steps to the place that became his place, right? And he could sit in that place and beside the road and, and, and hope and pray and cry out as he heard footsteps going by that maybe somebody might have a little bit of compassion on him. They might reach out and, and offer him a couple of denarii or a couple of coins, whatever it might be, enough to buy food for that day. Maybe enough to get uh, a room or something like that, right? Hard, struggle, day by day. And then something changes. Because that day, as he hears a crowd approaching, he hears the name Jesus being spoken. And he's heard some things. That this Jesus is the man of compassion. The one from God who has come to reveal the grace and the love God and the healing, in fact, that can come in the presence of God. And he cries out. And people are there trying to say, shut up, sit down. You have a worthless beggar, you have a blind man, what do you, you know, pipe down, enough. And yet Jesus, over all of that, hears and says, no, let him come to me. And offers to him, what would you like me to do for you? Let me see. Open my eyes. Give me sight whatever your translation may have, something to that effect. And Jesus is gracious and says, your faith has made you whole. You are well. And Bartimaeus becomes a follower. Well, maybe you don't like to be told that you are beggars, and that sometimes we are blind, but you know, sometimes we shuffle into this place. Maybe we haven't counted the number of steps, but I bet you, you pretty much know where you're gonna sit. Man, oh man, if somebody's sitting in your spot, sometimes you get a little worked up about that, right? And, uh, hopefully you can be a little gracious, but you come and you sit, and you, you sit there hoping that maybe today, Jesus the Savior will appear. Jesus will come into this place, and you might hear His voice, and you might cry out, Have mercy on me, Lord, I am a beggar. I need you in my life. I need your grace. I need the healing that you can, you can bring to me. And Jesus says, I can make you see again. I can open your eyes again again to who I am and to what this world can be and how you can be a part of that. And I pray that in this place you do experience that, that as we sing and lift these songs to God, as we offer prayers, as we come to the holy table, as water is poured and, and, and new life comes by the Spirit, that Jesus is in the very center of all that we are doing and our eyes are being opened. And sometimes we've got to practice a little bit of that, how to open our eyes, right? Because the world, the world doesn't want our eyes open, and maybe you've experienced that. Sadly, you know what? Sometimes it's people close to you who maybe don't want your eyes to be open very much. It can be family, it can be friends, it can be co-workers who will try to drag you down, who will discourage you, who will, uh, who will beat up on you in different ways, or who will be cynical, or whatever it may be, right? They don't always want you to have your eyes open, or if you've had your eyes open, they might try to create doubt, or they might try to take you away from the way. So you've got to keep practicing, you've got to come into this place. I heard a story about a pair of psychiatrists 
who were having a conversation and they were talking about what was the worst case you ever dealt with? What was the hardest, hardest individual you ever had to try and bring about a change in? And one said, yeah, you know, I had this young man who was thoroughly convinced that he had a rich uncle off in South America, and that this rich uncle was someday going to send him a letter letting him know that there's this vast fortune that is all his, and he was just caught up by this delusion so much that he wouldn't even leave his house. He just sat there waiting for that letter to arrive. And, and, and I, so I worked with him and talked about delusional behavior and, and all these things, and it took me eight years to finally convince him that this was a fantasy that he had created fully from, from just empty air. And I got him there. I got him finally to understand. And then that stupid letter arrived. <laughs> Have you ever received a letter from God? Full of grace, full of goodness. Martin Luther knew that. And he poured over it again and again with all the fear and all the doubt and all that he was wrestling with in his life. And until finally the Spirit broke through and enlightened him that it is about God's goodness and it is about God's grace and the promises. And if you haven't heard them, go back to the book and hear again and again that Jesus says, Come to me, you who are weak and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. It is the Father's good purpose to give you the kingdom. There are so many words of promise that are ours that we can take that are the words of Jesus Christ to lift us up and to open our eyes to who we are. First and foremost, who we are in God's eyes. And then to recognize who others are also in God's eyes. We can begin to see this world. I hope that Jesus has opened your eyes. And then as your eyes begin to be open, Jesus begins to focus. Now, somebody, anybody here lost a little bit of focus literally in your eyes? Anybody got some people who've done LASIK surgery? Some of you are glasses wearers. That tells the world around that, yeah, your eyes have lost a little bit of focus. Contacts, you can hide it a bit, but right? Sometimes we need some help being able to zero in uh, and be able to see things clearly. And Jesus is the lens by which we see everything. Jesus is the lens by which we can see our brothers and sisters around us and the world. And so we got to know him. we got to get close to him so that we begin to see with his eyes. We begin to see clearly, to have that perception. I'll give you another story. Uh, this is a, a Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, I'm testing your guys' literal literacy uh, knowledge, right? Anybody, anybody here know who Sir Arthur Conan Doyle is? Sherlock Holmes, yes, another hundred good points uh, given over to Leslie. Uh, heaven's going to be full of you celebrations. Uh, well, yeah, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle wrote the Sherlock Holmes stories, right? Sherlock Holmes, this incredible detective, really good at being able to perceive everything and see what's happening and understand what's going on. Well, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle took a little bit of holiday time. And he went to the south of France, Marseille, enjoyed a wonderful holiday there, uh, but he didn't want anybody to know, right? He, you know, like a lot of celebrities, even way back when, he didn't want people to know he was out and about, he wanted just some privacy. But it, the word kind of got out, it was spread around in the papers a little bit, so he jumped on the train, he was headed for Paris, he was going to go back to London. He pulled into the Paris station and he went and got a taxi cab, uh, and the cab driver chucked his suitcase into the back there and, and got him into the seat and said, Welcome, uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, uh, where can I take you today? He's like, all right, you've seen my picture, right? You know it was me. He says, no, I've never seen you before in my life. He's like, what are you talking about? No, I, just, I knew it was you. He's like, incredible. How did you know that it was me? He said, well, this is the train station and the platform where people from Marseille get off. And I knew from the papers that you had been on holiday in Marseille. So I knew that for one thing. Uh, I also knew that... Uh, you are a writer, and I saw that on your finger you had a stain of ink, so I could tell you were a writer as well. I could tell by the complexion that you've been somewhere sunny, you had a pretty nice tan, uh, and uh, your clothing is very English, it's not French at all. So with all of those pieces of information, I was able to do a little deduction, and I knew that you were Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. And, and Sir Arthur said, that's amazing. You are, in fact, the manifestation of my creation, Sherlock Holmes, remarkable. A sense of perception and ability to deduce these things. That's incredible. And the taxi driver said, yes, thank you very much. Plus your name was on your suitcase. <laughs> Sometimes the truth is right there. It's right in front of us. For all to see. If we have eyes to perceive. And a focus to notice that it is Jesus Christ we are gazing upon. When you come into this place. Each and every Sunday, I, I pray that a blessing comes upon us, that something in the Word, something in the music, something in one another. We are there to be a gift and a blessing to one another in the presence of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We come as beggars. 
into this place. But thanks be to God that we have a Savior who will stop for beggars, who will lift them up, who will make a new creation of them and help them along the way. One last story for you. This again comes from history. Uh, it's about an Austrian count by the name of Nicholas von Zinzendorf. And you Germans might enjoy that. Uh, and, and he lived uh, many hundred years ago and, and uh, was a man of leisure, a man of wealth, and he had gone into the legal profession and he was being trained as a lawyer uh, and, and had gone through all the processes and was going to go and do a tour of the European nations to make some networks and to make some new connections, but also just to see the sights before he took up his career. And as he was traveling about, he stopped and he went to an art gallery and he was perusing these wonderful pieces of art. And then he came to one, and this one grabbed him, for it was Jesus on the cross. But the artist had painted it, so the eyes were staring directly up, and anybody who stopped to look at that picture would see the eyes of Christ gazing directly into their own. And underneath was a simple caption, I did this for you. What are you doing for me? And his eyes were opened. It's like scales falling off of them. And he had a new vision of who he was and what he was to do. He gave up the legal profession. He started a community uh, where people could come to grow in their spiritual life, where they could come to be blessed by one another. Uh, it began a whole movement uh, of what sort of became called the Pietists, people dedicated to scripture and devotion and to living their lives following deeply and closely with Jesus Christ. Now, I didn't take the time to find that painting and put it up there for you, but Jesus does look into our heart today. He is the one who has set us free. And like Bartimaeus, he says, now come and follow me on the way. And see what I can do with your life. May he open our eyes and give us the focus to follow where he leads us. And may God make that so. Amen. Many of you will know, and I did not tell the story of John Newton, that is a name that many people know immediately as the author of Amazing Grace that says, I once was blind, but now I see we can rejoice that day by day we are given new eyes to see what God is doing and what God is doing in us. Let us rise and let us join in that beautiful hymn, Amazing Grace.
meant, but people words of promise to know that there is a future for all of us in this world and in the world that is to come. Therefore, we are bold to live by faith and to confess the faith that we hold in common. And we do so using those ancient words, the Apostles' Creed. Let us join our hearts and our voices together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's take a moment to share that peace we have through Jesus Christ our Lord.
beggars, this is most certainly true. We come with nothing, knowing it is God who can provide and will provide as God knows his best. Therefore we are bold to cry out that he might have mercy and fill us. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you are our teacher and our healer. You once heard the cry of the blind beggar when others would have silenced him. So we ask that you teach us to be persistent in prayer. Give us courage to ask plainly what it is we might need from you. And then help us to respond in your name and by the power of the Holy Spirit to take up a ministry, the path that is your way in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you are our teacher and our healer. Yes, you heard the cry of the blind beggar when others would have silenced him, and so teach us to be attentive to the voices of others in our world when so often others want to silence them or ignore them. Help us to respond through the power of your Holy Spirit to offer healing to those who are afflicted and to offer welcome to those who may feel abandoned. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you have called your church to be the community of Jesus Christ in the world. He is the eternal high priest, holy, blameless, and undefiled, exalted above the heavens. He is worthy of glory and praise, and yet he is humble and continues to come to us to lift us and others up. We pray your blessing upon our congregation, so that all that we do, every path that we undertake, might bring glory to his name and serve his purposes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healer of our every ill, we come to you humbly, knowing that you can and you will provide as you know us best. And so we entrust to you all the cares and burdens that we carry and that others may be carrying as well, entrusting them to your loving care. So hear the prayers that we offer as we bring them to you, both silently and aloud.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This time I would invite the congregation to be seated, and I would ask for their announcements, which need to be lifted up in our community at this time. As always, I encourage you to uh, take a read through your bulletin. Uh, some of them are repeats, but does not mean that they are not important. Uh, we will have a lunch following worship. That is important. So if you are able, please come next door to the parish hall. Uh, there will be a variety of chilies, I think, and a uh, wonderful opportunity to fellowship with one another. There will be a meeting following that, a town hall meeting, so please, if you can, stick around for that. Uh, lots of information, different things happening in the congregation. One of them is the free authorized debt program. Uh, if you were here last Sunday, you may have heard an announcement about that. If you would like to have your offering just automatically transferred to uh, the church's uh, bank account, uh, that can be done for you. And uh, that way you don't have to worry about writing checks or coming up with cash or you're going to be gone for a month or whatever it may be. Uh, take note of that in your budgeting, but that way the congregation, you can be a good steward uh, to the life and ministry of our congregation. So if you want to learn some more about that, talk to Skyler. There are some forms you will need to fill out. And it will also be presented at the town hall, so if you can, stick around for that. I do want to say thank you to everybody who came out yesterday. We had a really good crew. It was a wonderful day. Uh, we were able to get the exterior and the interior cleaned in, in some very good ways. Uh, I don't know if you know that, but you make these pews dirty. It's a good thing. I want you sitting in them, but after six months, they need a little cleaning. We had some people who came out and scrubbed and cleaned them, and I don't mean that to be... Uh, statement about the clothing or anything like that, uh, but uh, thank you to everybody who came yesterday and, and gave time and energy to the cleaning of our congregation. It looks great. It looks good too. We want to celebrate with those who will celebrate this coming week. Uh, we do not have any anniversaries, but those with birthdays are Daryl Owen celebrate the big 7 -0. Congratulations to you, Daryl. God bless you. And Terry Langridge, who's not quite 70, but uh, celebrates as well. Let's join together wishing them a happy birthday. Happy birthday. 